everyone and welcome back to another let's create game mechanics in the unreal engine in this video i recreate the mechanics from the game super hot and this is a game that i've only personally recently started playing so this seemed like a perfect time to jump in and create some really cool slow motion effects if you're unfamiliar with the game super hot it's a first person shooter where time only moves when the player is moving so everything will stop around you if you're not pressing any input looking around or taking any actions so the steps needed to recreate these mechanics were to implement a slow motion effect that will make time slow down when the player is not moving. I needed to add a damage system to account for projectiles and thrown weapons, to create and implement a simple enemy class to visually represent incoming projectiles, and then finally to polish and add the finishing touches to the visuals. So to get started, I created a brand new project using the default FPS template provided in the Unreal Engine, as this comes with some handy movement features which would save me implementing the basics. With the project I've been running, the first thing was to destroy the default shot sound, as anybody who's heard this before is aware that it's offensive to the ears. And I mean, like, really offensive. Next, I tidied up the project structure, accounting for the assets that I'd be bringing in to the project a little bit later. And then finally, I just got rid of the default geometry, the map text, and altered the sky sphere a bit so that it had a little bit less of the Unreal template look going on. More of that stuff will be focused on a little bit later, but we can park that here for now. The next step was to get the slow motion logic implemented, which basically comes down to whether the player is moving in either forward or a sideways direction. I created a variable to track the different axis movements based on the input axis bindings, which were already implemented in the player class. And I then simply check against these values and I condensed the results of this into a pure function for easy reuse later. Using the new function, I'm now able to set a time dilation and an alpha variable variable based on whether the player is moving and then loop the global time dilation on the event tick to ease in and out of slow motion. The alternative here would have been to simply enter and exit slow motion without any easing but this does look a little bit jolty and for a small amount of additional work you do get quite a nice result from this. This also could have come under the polish section of the project setup but I kind of wanted to include this now as I think it really helps get the feel of uh, the game down a little bit more from the beginning here. Another nice use of the time dilation that I noticed in Super Hot when I was actually going back through and taking some gameplay footage to kind of break down and get a better idea of what I needed to implement. And this was actually slightly harder to spot is that whenever the player presses the fire button or throws their weapon, time speeds up for a split second to allow a burst of movement from the projectile or the weapon. I've also specifically said that this happens when the button is pressed as the increase in time happens regardless of whether the user has a weapon or ammo. So simply pressing the button actually causes a very small burst of time to speed up. So to replicate this, I've added a check for a recent attack press and this will be again extended to when the thrown weapon functionality comes in too. And then after a small delay, this is reset when the button's been pressed, sending it back into the slow motion state. With the slow motion features fully implemented, the next mechanic was to focus on the weapon throwing. For this, I needed to extract the weapon out of the player class and into its own weapon blueprint class. And although the art is not currently the point of focus to save a little bit of time later on when I start importing the weapon models, I brought the weapon in now so that I'd only need to position the sockets for attaching the weapon to the player once. For the weapon, I've used a free asset provided by Tasty Tony. Link for that will be in the description below and I was made aware of this asset in the Mix and Jams great videos where he also recreates the super hot mechanics but inside of the Unity game engine. I also needed to alter the scale of the gun inside of Blender so whilst I was doing that I've added a simple kick animation to be used when the weapon is fired again just getting some of those artistic requirements out of the way as we're going through. 
So inside of the new weapon class, I've implemented a fire function, which will check if it's ready to fire based on a very simple fire rate cooldown. I've also added a function for when the weapon is collected. This disables the collisions and physics to ensure that there's no unwanted interaction when being held by the player, but this does allow for physics-based movement when it's not held or being thrown. Back in the player class, I removed the weapon and fire functionality, which is provided by default. And in its place, I now check to see if we're holding weapon. If this is true, then we can call the fire function on the weapon. And if not, the player will trace forward to see if there's a weapon to pick up. With all of that done, the player can now collect and fire weapons around the level. And at this point, it doesn't actually look much different than the default weapon implementation, but it does allow the weapon to be attached to the player and more importantly, detached from the player. So we can now start working on throwing things. To get the weapon throwing working, I first added a thrown function, which is similar to the collected function, but it enables physics and collisions again. With the collisions and physics reactivated, the player now adds force at a point to provide a little rotation when it's in flight, and then it applies the full force to launch the gun forward. The final steps for this feature were to reset the stored reference of the held weapon to ensure that the player can grab another weapon. And then to wrap up the weapon pickup and throw functionality, I've added a simple lerp animation when collecting a weapon to make it smoothly move towards the player rather than just teleporting to the player position. Now for the enemy implementation, I needed to get the enemies added to the game. For this, I've imported the free animation starter pack into the project. You can get this from the marketplace. And with this imported to the project, you gain full access to a fully rigged mannequin as well as some pistol animations which are perfect for this template. To help get a better idea of how the final results will look, I also created three simple materials to match the super hot visuals. The red enemy material, the black material used on all objects and weapons, and the flat white material for all level assets. Again, by creating and implementing these materials now, it meant that I would need to swap out fewer materials in the art pass of the project. As for this project, I only really wanted the enemies to act as targets and provide the visualization for incoming projectiles for the player. I've implemented some very simple logic for them. First, in the construction script, a visual representation of the pistol is attached to a gun hold socket on the skeletal mesh's hand. And then on the event begin play, a reference to the player is stored and a firing function loop is started based on a set time delay. And then on the event tick, the enemy is set to always rotate to face towards the player. And finally, as long as the player hasn't died, the firing function will loop every so many seconds. With those steps implemented, we have this final result, which nicely replicates the enemy implementation in super hot, just slightly simplified. As a happy accident here, I also discovered that the projectiles can be shot out of the air, which is a really cool feature in super hot, and was actually one of the first achievements I accidentally unlocked in the game. After this quick test though, there were a few collision channels to update before moving on to the final enemy feature, which is to take damage and enter some kind of ragdoll state. Uh, rather than going with ragdolls, I did try to recreate the shatter effect that happens, and to do that inside of Unreal, I've chosen to enable the Apex plugin for this project. Now this is no longer officially supported, but at the time of releasing this video, it will allow me to more easily share the resulting files to all of you guys and make it easier for you to use. Whereas using the newer Chaos Physics Engine would require you to download and install a source version of Unreal. So for those reasons, although Apex is no longer supported, slightly limited and a little bit buggy, I have chosen and decided that that would work best for sharing purposes with this project. So with Apex installed, I created a copy of the skeletal mesh in the idle pistol pose as a static mesh and then turned this static mesh into a destructible mesh. Next, I check when a thrown weapon or fired projectile hits an enemy. The enemy class then spawns a weapon blueprint class which is launched towards the player. The hit enemy class also spawns a new destructible enemy class in the exact same position and rotation of the hit enemy, which then destroys itself. And of course, at this stage, do remember, if you enjoy these videos, find them useful or interesting, please do leave a like and share the videos around. That really helps. And do be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. But moving on to the last step, which is, of course, the polish. In the case of this game, it leans very heavily on the 
stylized and unique visual direction. So I started by making a quick model for the bullet inside of Blender, as that was one of the last remaining things that really stands out in the core gameplay loop. I then created a ribbon particle effect and attached this to the bullet blueprint class to get the bullet trail effect. And the last touch to add to the weapon firing polish was a muzzle flash. I personally found the effect from Super Hot was a little bit hard to see to the point that I didn't realise it was there for quite some time whilst I was playing the game, so I've created a slightly more chunky stylized effect for this project. Finally, I imported the free industrial asset pack from the Unreal Marketplace and with some alterations to the materials, adding some post-process effects and tweaking the global lighting and shadows, the final result for this recreation looks like this. Now this has been one of my favourite results from the Let's Create playlist so far. It's definitely been one of the most fun to implement and I think that's just because the mechanics in Superhot, uh, whilst looking really cool, can actually be very simple to implement but they mesh together really well just to make a really visually and mechanically interesting game to play and watch uh, and I think that works really well for this type of project recreation. So do let me know what you think of this one in the comments down below. If you've watched the other videos in the playlist so far, which of these do you prefer? Uh, which has been your favourite so far? And also do let me know what you'd like to see recreated in the future, as I'm always open to suggestions and an interest to hear what sort of games other people are playing and would like to see remade in the Unreal Engine. So I hope you've enjoyed this though. Thank you for watching and an especially big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters uh, and your continued support of the channel is one of the things that will allow me to keep Keep making larger projects like this that I can share with everyone. So I'll leave that video here for now though. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.